Hello, and welcome to a demo of the new Relic provider for Terraform. My name is John Thurman, and I'm going to run you through our getting started guide, which will link available in the description, um, how to use Terraform with New Relic. Uh, to start off, I'm going to assume that you know something about Terraform. I'm not going to talk a lot about the language or the HCL specific stuff. Um, that is all covered in a ton of other good tutorials, so this is going to be specific to setting up New Relic for the first time with Terraform. To get started, I have a very simple Terraform configuration. In this case, we're including the new provider, New Relic, and then creating an alert policy. The provider also requires an API key. Uh, I'm passing it in by environment variable so it doesn't appear in the configuration. That is a best practice, uh, so I'd recommend that as well. When you add a new provider, you'll need to rerun Terraform in it to go out and download the, the provider locally so that it can be executed. And then between commands, you'll want to run a Terraform plan to make sure that what you think is going to happen is actually what's going to happen. In this case, it looks good. We're going to create a single alert policy. That's, uh, that's all. Um, there is information that's added. The incident preference is per policy. That's a default. You can override that. Um, all right, so let's actually do an apply here. And now from my laptop, Terraform has configured new relic with an alert policy with the name my alert policy name, which is super clever. But alert policy by itself doesn't do a whole lot. So this next Terraform configuration actually reaches out to new relic as a for a data source of application and looks for the application name, APM application name, web portal. Now this is important. That's the name that the agents are reporting to New Relic as, which is case sensitive. So it must be an exact match to the name that the agents are reporting as. Let's take a look to see. Running a plan at this state will reach out, will verify that we can find that name. If that name didn't exist, you'd get an error back. So we should be good to go. But that's not going to really get us anything, right? We have two data points now. We have a policy and we have the app name or the app ID that we'll use, but we don't have anything targeting that application. So we'll set up an alert condition. In this case, we're going to set up an app dex alert condition that targets that data, that data source application and set a threshold of 0.75 if we're below that four or five minutes, we'll send an alert. I'm going to skip the plans for right now, and we will see that just this resource is being created. Let's apply that. Great. So now we have the application, we have an alert policy, we have a condition, but if something goes wrong, we will never know because we need a notification channel. In this case, at the very bottom here, I'm adding a notification channel for email. Um, we support a, a plethora of them. Slack's a pretty common one or PagerDuty. Um, but for this demo, we're doing an email alert notification. And then below that, we're linking that notification channel to the policy. Now, if you did add a Slack and a PagerDuty notification channel as well, you can list multiple IDs in that channel IDs array um, and just have that one block that links it back to the, to the policy. Let's go ahead and apply this. And we've configured some very basic alerting for the web portal application. Now that was a fair amount of code to write to get a single alert. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of it right now and show you another way we have recently written a module uh, that's on the Terraform registry for APM as a bootstrap module. So in this case, you would be required to define your notification channel. That's the only thing we don't create because we don't know how you want to be notified of issues. And then we have a module, new relic slash APM slash new relic, that takes the application name, web portal in this case, account ID that that uh, application is on, and then sets some defaults or overridable uh, alert conditions. 
uh, AppDex and error rate are both set in here where we're overriding the default values. Also, if we specify an application URL, which you do not have to, but is a good practice, um, we will set up a synthetics monitor, a simple synthetics monitor, and a uh, alert condition on that monitor as well. And then at the bottom, we're linking in the notification channel that we created initially to the policy. So let's see how that works. Oh, every time you create a new module or every time you need to use a new module, you'll need to run a Terraform in it to actually download the module locally so the code is is there. And in this case, you can see there are seven resources that are being created. These last two are a uh, NERCL condition for synthetics and then a synthetics monitor itself that is a very simple uh, ping monitor that's running from one location, in this case, US East 1, uh, hitting the new relic URL. We'll go ahead and build that out. Success. So as you can see, Terraform is very flexible. You can go in and create all kinds of monitors yourself. All of the building blocks are there. And if you want to shortcut that, uh, we do have some modules available. APM is the first module that we're releasing right now. Uh, and we would love to get some feedback on that or other use cases that people are, are looking to have solved. Um, but that concludes the demo. Thank you for watching.